Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Let us pray. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your spirit come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise forever and ever. Amen. Psalm 9. You, Lord, have never failed those who seek you. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvellous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will make music to your name, O Most High. When my enemies are driven back, they stumble and perish at your presence. For you have maintained my right and my cause. You sat on your throne giving righteous judgment. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name for ever and ever. The enemy was utterly laid waste. You uprooted their cities. Their very memory has perished. But the Lord shall endure for ever. He has made fast his throne for judgment. For he shall rule the world with righteousness and govern the peoples with equity. Then will the Lord be a refuge for the oppressed a refuge in the time of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you, for you, Lord, have never failed those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare among the peoples the things he has done. The avenger of blood has remembered them. He did not forget the cry of the oppressed. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider the trouble I suffer from those who hate me, you that lift me up from the gates of death, that I may tell all your praises in the gates of the city of Zion and rejoice in your salvation. The nations shall sink into the pit of their making, and in the snare which they set will their own foot be taken. The Lord makes himself known by his acts of justice. The wicked are snared in the works of their own hands. They shall return to the land of darkness, all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, and let not mortals have the upper hand. Let the nations be judged before your face. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but mortal. You, Lord, have never failed those who seek you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Remember, Lord, all who cry to you from death's dark gates, do not forget those whom the world forgets, but raise your faithful ones to Zion's gate with your all-conquering Son 
Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Paul writes to the Corinthians, let me come back to where I started. And don't hold it against me if I continue to sound a little foolish. Or if you'd rather, just accept that I am a fool and let me rant on a little. I didn't learn this kind of talk from Christ. Oh no, it's a bad habit I picked up from the three ring preachers that are so popular these days. Since you sat there in the judgment seat observing all these shenanigans, you can afford to humor an occasional fool who happens along. You have such admirable tolerance for impostors who rob your freedom, rip you off, steal you blind, put you down, even slap your face. I shouldn't admit it to you, but our stomachs aren't strong enough to tolerate that kind of stuff. Since you admire the egomaniacs of the pulpit so much, remember this is your old friend the fool talking, let me try my hand at it. Do they brag of being Hebrews, Israelites, the pure race of Abraham? I am their match. Are they servants of Christ? I can go one better. I can't believe I'm saying these things. It's crazy to talk this way. But I started and I'm going to finish. I've worked much harder, been jailed more often, beaten up more times than I can count, and at death's door time after time. I've been flogged five times with the Jews' 39 lashes, beaten by Roman rods three times, pummeled with rocks once. I've been shipwrecked three times and immersed in the open sea for a night and a day. In hard traveling year in and year out, I've had to ford rivers, fend off robbers, struggle with friends, struggle with foes. I've been at risk in the city, at risk in the country, endangered by the desert sun and sea storm and betrayed by those who I thought were my brothers. I've known drudgery and hard labor, many a long and lonely night without sleep, many a missed meal, blasted by the cold, naked to the weather. And that's not the half of it. When you throw in the daily pressures and anxieties of all the churches, when, you, when someone gets to the end of his rope, I feel the desperation in my bones. When someone is duped into sin, an angry fire burns in my gut. If I have to brag about myself, I brag about the humiliations that make me like Jesus. The eternal and blessed God and Father of our Master Jesus knows I'm not lying. Remember the time I was in Damascus and the governor of King Aretas posted guards at the city gates to arrest me. I crawled through a window in the wall, was let down in a basket and had to run for my life. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation.
And so we come to our intercessions as we reflect on the day. We ask God to show us the times and occasions where he was most present. In that process, we might also recognize the places where we didn't make space, we didn't stay connected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we reflect on that New Testament reading tonight, <clears throat> we might uh, think about the, the leaders that we admire and that we, you know, that we look to, that set a good example of uh, leadership following in the steps of Christ. We thank you, for, thank you Father, for uh, Paul's giving of his, of his whole self out of love for the people that he served. And we, thought, we thank you for our bishops and archbishops and vicars and ministers, pastors across the country who... Uh, give themselves for their people. And we pray that you would uh, hold them in integrity and enable them to give more than what they have to offer because what they give comes from you. Father, we thank you for the transformative power of good leadership. We pray that you'd bless us with it. Enable us to, uh, enable us to recognize it and enable it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we continue to pray for those who are affected by the virus, those who are afraid in hospital and at home, those who care for them, and all those who are feeling the ancillary knock-on effects of the restrictions on life that we continue to experience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow. Though our faith is as small as a mustard seed, make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so with longing we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So do join Sarah for morning prayer tomorrow and uh, evening prayer in the evening. Uh, on Thursday evening, I uh, hope we're going to be visited by the, uh, the Bishop of Ripon. Bishop Helen Ann Hartley, and uh, she's going to come and see what's happening with the uh, Breakfast Club stuff. And uh, I hope that she'll be able to join us and participate in evening prayer that night. So as we've been praying for our leaders this evening, it's good to be joined by our, uh, the area bishop for this area. Have a good night, and see you on Thursday. Bye-bye.